Hi guys, I'm Silvio and this is part 2 of the mini-series Do It Yourself Street Lamps for your Christmas Villages using LEDs. Before going very deep into LEDs, let me try to explain or clarify something that I haven't forgot to tell you in part 1, but simply absolutely voluntarily omitted it because it's not even thinkable. More difficult than a mission impossible. What I'm talking about. I've told you that those four standard colonial street lamps from Limax slash Lemax are absolutely and definitely useless. Simply because the LED bulbs inside the four lanterns are too fade, non-existent, almost non-existent and they can't project enough light into your street, uh, Christmas villages, sorry. But the shape, the design of those street lamps is almost perfect, very colonial, very Victorian era, suited perfectly for your Caddington villages. So why I haven't proposed you to replace those useless uh, light bulbs, LED light bulbs inside the lanterns with some more efficient ones because of the material guys the plastic here, because this is not resin, this is plastic is not dense, it's less than uh, appropriate you can see that if I bend this lantern here, I risk to break all the structure. And also the, the pull there, if I bend a little, it will bend, then it will break. It will snap <laughs> immediately. Uh, they are cheap street lamps, obviously, but also very fragile absolutely impossible to work. Uh, the plastic I use for my standard uh, street lamps or for the new ones is more dense and it's not bendable, okay? So it has, it is empty inside, they are, there are grooves inside, but this is intended uh, as I will manage to get uh, some wires inside, change the bulbs, etc. Et et but those street lamps here, if I try to open the lantern, because here the lantern you have the bulb inside, then you have some naked, stripped uh, copper, very <laughs> microscopic uh, wires. Uh, those, the, the wires here, the white wires here are covered with some PVC, with some plastic, but the ones going from the LED to the inside of the street lamps, because they needed to go inside these freeze there, these standard freeze there, and then inside the pole there, then they come out from the base there. Here it's stripped, so you risk to break it and you need to mm, to cut them or desolder them and then uh, sol solder them anew using some uh, soldering iron, etc. A new uh, uh, bulb. But if I try to open this, I am sure I will break it. It's simply the uh, lower part of the lamp here, the lantern is simply glued there. But if I try to open this, as the plastic is very thin, it will break. And then you will need to work on some very tiny space. I don't have a very big hands and very big fingers, but maybe you will need very, very, very tiny hands to operate inside those lanterns there. Assembling those lanterns uh, during the production, um, it's easy, okay? But once you have glued them together, absolutely impossible and then you will need to find some non-standard leds because those are not a five millimeters round uh, shaped uh, but between 1.5 and 2 millimeters 
in diameters but I will try to explain this in some minutes so if you want to I can try to replace those but it will take me at least two hours per lantern to replace instead of 15 minutes to build those LEDs let's say 20 minutes to build these LED these street lamps here or 25 minutes but it will be very very dangerous and half of the lanterns will break down so don't even think about it it is doable yes but i don't want to make you lose times more than necessary okay uh, let's go deep into uh, LEDs, then I will uh, try to introduce you some notions of soldering, because it will be necessary. So, LEDs, guys, uh, you have uh, already seen me using different types of LEDs, but generally I use those uh, five millimeters let me try to approach the camera a little more those are five millimeters rounded shaped cylindrical LEDs they are standard five millimeters is the diameter of the, uh, the of the LED bulb the diameter so the diameter and they are shaped like that and then they are rounded on the top this is standard and most ancient LEDs that you can find on the market. They have different uh, sh um, shape, length, and they come in different color. As I told you, those one you buy them on the market, uh, specifying the color and the Kelvin, so the intensity of the light uh, and those are 20,000 to 24,000 MCD. Would you the unit of measure of intensity of the light? But you can also find LEDs inside some uh, tea light like that that you can buy easily on Amazon and they came in different colors. This one is daylight white, this one is more orangish uh, color but inside and i can show you if i remove the plastic you find inside some standard five millimeters sorry once again you will find inside some standard five millimeters uh, in diameter leds like this one i've simply removed the uh, the cover there of the LED like that but maybe you can also recognize LED from this bulb here this is the standard Lemax Limax uh, light uh, used uh, light bulb used for the buildings and if I can remove not from this side but from this side the top the cover without breaking anything i hope like that i can show you that inside and hope you can see it there are one two three four smd leds maybe you can see that there is L LED 1, LED 2, LED 3 and LED 4, LED, LED, LED 1, LED 2, LED 3 and LED 4. And the LEDs are those rounded yellow, um, yellow squared. SMD surface mounted diode, okay, light emitted light emitting diode and this bulb here has not just one LED but four mini uh, SMD uh, LEDs and even some resistors because uh, this is uh, this is powered by 4.5 uh, volts but I, those LEDs are 3 volts 
working LEDs, so you need a resistor to avoid the LEDs to explode. <laughs> no, they don't explode to um, to break. Okay, to get burned by two powerful uh, voltage. Okay, and LEDs. And let me show you something. I prepared a little circuit not to talk about this circuit and I have here some uh, AC adapter once again I will show you the range is from 3 volts to 12 volts and I've set it to 3 volts because I'm using 3 volts LEDs let me use the black wire here to connect to the black here that is the negative and I remember you that with LEDs the flows is between positive and negative okay the uh, voltage goes from positive pole to negative pole so from the red to the black positive and negative then I want to show you differences in uh, LEDs. This one is 20 to 24 thousand and the longest leg is the positive and the shortest is the negative and I will place it like that okay here let me switch on this and you can see that it is very bright very cold white and the power is that it is daylight. If I take some daylight LED and I place it like that, the positive longest shortest and I place it like that, you can see immediately that the intensity of the voltage, the intensity of the light is less powerful. Hope you can see it. I don't know if the camera can get it, but this one is more bright than the second one, okay? Place it like that, maybe it is more noticeable. This one is more powerful than this one. The MCD 20 to 24,000, 12 to 14,000 uh, MCD, <coughs> micro candela. Then, if I use the brightest one that I've used for my uh, chapel, those, the legs are different, they are longer, uh, longer longest, the longest one is always the positive. And if I place it like that, the positive and negative, you will see that this one is more intense once again, but it has less Kelvin, okay? More intense because the light is more intense, but it is less white. It's not pure, bright, cold white, but it has less Kelvin. More Kelvin, more towards the white, less Kelvin, more towards the yellow. And the color is a very pure white for those two ones, and this one is uh, less white. But very very powerful if you can get a look to my christmas villages the video from my 2023 christmas village you can see that with this simple led you can bring light to almost uh, 40 to 60 centimeters um, diameter in your christmas villages having the leds at this eight here so very 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 powerful led then there are other types all of LEDs. There are flickering LEDs as I've shown you like those ones, but they exist even in the market like this one and I can place it like that. Maybe I will shut off this one and I place them inside maybe i will remove this one that is a 14000 and i will place it like that inside here 
and then 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 the 20,000 I will leave it there so different types of LEDs okay they light the flickering uh, called the white but there are also some uh, different types of LEDs uh, maybe you can remember the RGB those are flickering but they also change color Okay, blue there, and then there are also the RGB fast. I'm going very quick because 30 minutes is nothing. Those one are fast flickering LEDs. They change colors more quickly. Okay, and it all depends on the project you want to achieve, okay? maybe i will go that way and this one is green this one is blue red green yellow and they change color okay this one more quick this one less quick but they change colors let me go maybe with the black it is more visible and they change color and the last one I wanted to show you, fog LED. The difference is the material of the LED. You can see approaching the camera that the 5 mm diameter here is very crystal clear. The plastic is very crystal clear. This one is very uh, opaque is very foggy and uh, let me talk about projecting light this one and the foggy one like that and let me talk about let me remove it and place it here let me talk about the range of light okay you can see that the one that is not foggy this one the first one is projecting a cone of light directly and you can see the cone of light projected but this one is foggy what happens with the projector of your with your uh, car projectors light projectors when you drive into fog it's like not having the light getting uh, very deep into the road but it's like having a wall that uh, it take the light and uh, apply the light on this wall and the light can't um, get through the fog uh, the light is okay guys the lights go the light goes in plain linear if you hit it on the light start and uh, the cone of light emitted goes like this okay the near the source the lower the diameter of the um of the cone of light the more you are <laughs> away from the source of light more the cone of light is wide open but here the light is very intense here is less intense because this is not a, la a laser light this is a led light it is more intense near the source less intense uh, away from the point uh, that is generating light but if you get into the fog into a wall of fog the light will not go through the fog but it will project against the wall against the fog so it is a wider range but less project less light it is a way of not having a too uh, <laughs> a too uh, strong light and in camera you can appreciate that this is less 
um, less dangerous for your eyes because it is foggy and this is projecting the red light into the camera and if I approach the camera you can see the difference so foggy lights it will foggy LEDs it will get a more diffuse light the other LEDs get very deep if you don't find on the market um, and you want to use those uh, foggy, less uh, powerful, but more diffuse lights, you can simply use uh, on those very clear plastic some sand paper and uh, working on the light, on the bulb itself, you can sand it and the plastic will no more be perfectly crystal clear, but will be uh, opaque and so the light will diffuse will diffuse more you have just seen me using some white but they are white they work as I told you last in last part white blue and green works at 3 volts yellow and orange at 2 volts red at 1.8 between 1.8 and 2 volts so everything I've shown you works at 3 volts and this is a particular LEDs that it is uh, not a standard that works with a 3 volt battery inside. Those batteries are inside here, but it is not white, it is orange. If you want to use some orange that it is between uh, 2 and 2.1 volts, like those ones, and you want to use those multi-switch AC adapter that they don't go below 3 volts, you need to use some resistor. Let me try to explain why. Here, positive is red, negative is black. Let me use a resistor. A resistor will limit, as I told you last in last part, with the ohm uh, low voltage equal resistor multiplied by intensity of the current, the ampere. Okay. Uh, if you and the um, LEDs works in, with certain amperes and certain, if you uh, push up the resistance you will get less flow of current getting from the source to the bulb and it is exactly what I want I have here an LED that works at 2 volts but this is the lower voltage here is 3 volts so I need to place a resistor between the positive and the positive of uh, LED of the LEDs that it's nothing more than some wires going <laughs> repeatedly around the center and uh, and slow down the voltage that will go through there then I will connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. Just remember that you have 3 volts here and the LED bulbs work at 2 volts. And then I will switch it on. It is between orange and red and it works. If I don't use the uh, resistor it will work anyway at 3 volts, but in some minutes it will broke. It will be uh, non-functional forever. Okay, uh, I don't want to damage this one because I want to use them. Let me show you, last thing I will show you is why I use 3 volts and what happens if you don't use 3 volts 
let me show you in this way. Let me take this one once again and I will stop then here talking about LEDs. Okay. Like that. I am still at 3 volt. I will sacrifice as a pan god this one is a 3 volt. Okay. It is 3 volt and it works. Okay. Switch off. I will let the AC adapter discharge. I will go up to 4.5 volts and you will see that it is still working. 4.5 volts like that. It is more intense. It will be, uh, it will go working for less hours, but it works. Now I will go up to 9 volts. Please look attentively what will happen it is not dangerous, it will not explode, but let me go this way. I will approach the camera as it will be very quick, like that, and then I will go like that, ploof, and it has burned like that. It will not explode. It will burn inside the plastic. It will smell like plastic. Okay, it will smell like burned plastic, but it will not explode. So it is not dangerous. And uh, inside, inside the LEDs has burned. So this one has been sacrificed on the altar <laughs> of this part two. It has been very quick. So uh, I told you that it prevents uh, also uh, um, the voltage to go from positive, from negative to positive, okay. Uh, and if I go back to three volts like that, okay, I will remove that one. If I go, from negative to positive, the LED will not broke, okay? It simply doesn't work, but it, it's not um, broke. If I get the LEDs and I turn it correctly, positive and negative, it will, <laughs> sorry, I haven't switched it on. So I place it negative with positive and positive with negative and it will not work but it, it it is not broke i will get it like that and it's still working so it, it simply prevent uh, voltage or the flow of current going from negative to positive enough i think i've told you everything about leds and i will use intensively those ones the five millimeters Okay, I will certainly go over the 30 minute long uh, video, but uh, for a do-it-yourself street lamp, I have introduced you the LEDs, but I need to introduce to you some other important part, component, the wires, the wiring system. Those are very flexible, very flexible, not breakable, no, flexible and bendable um, wires covered with uh, silicon, so plastic, but silicon it is very flexible. They resist uh, heat and uh, fire, okay? But those aren't standard uh, wires that you find everywhere. You are certainly uh, used to those kind of wires. This is a wire used for your domestic appliances, dishwasher, uh, fridge, etc and it is not that flexible. There are three wires inside, maybe I will approach the camera. There are the two main core wires, brown and blue, 
Then there is the earth that is generally green, yellow, or green and yellow together. And this is very thick wires compared to those ones. Very thick, I can show you the difference. This is very thick compared to the ones I'm using and they are standard for whatever I want to do with my Christmas villages. They are a little more thick than those wires, but those are not as flexible as those ones because this is plastic covered wire, electric wire, so copper wire. Um, dimensions. It is everywhere in the world a standard using AWG standard, it is a North American standard and the one I'm using are 24 AWG and I am starting with this one. Outside diameter 1.46 uh, millimeters, so the pure brown and the pure green wire the core diameter is 0.5 millimeters. Inside this 1.46 millimeter, there is a four strand, 40, sorry, 40 strand uh, wa uh, wires, wire, having a diameter of 0.5 millimeters. So four strands, 40 strands, very, very thin inside that, and they are thin covered, pre thinned wires use it for electronics and they avoid to use some more tasks that i will introduce you this is general the higher you go the thinner the diameter of the wire will be the higher the awg is the thicker the diameter is for example this wire here that i use for extending the ac adapter cords of the building is 16 AWG. It is 2.3 millimeters outside diameter and 1.9 milli 1.29 millimeters the inside diameter made by 40 uh, strands also. Those are 40 strands inside. And this diameter, if I can get it perfectly cylindrical, is 1.29 millimeters. And it is not pre thinned so it is a pure copper color and plastic PVC around so not very flexible as those one and if I get the wire like that it will stay like that uh, but if I get a circle there it will not stand there it will regain the original shape so this one is very good for extending the cords of your buildings but not for doing this job, that you need some wires that will be uh, not too thick, not too thin, and will be suited for these connectors here that I'm not talking right now. I need to talk to you about the wiring system. 24 AWG, they come in those uh, packaging here, and inside you have 24. AWG wires, multicolors, and I use them. Generally, I have here two different colors because I need to differentiate the positive and negative. Here, the positive is green, and the brown is the negative because it is more uh, like a brown. In this case, plus and minus, uh, it is a positive red and negative yellow. Okay, so this is 24, this is 26, so 26 is um, thinner than 24, and then I got also a, 20, a 30 AWG, so 30 AWG 0 0.6 millimeters uh, core di um, outside diameter and 0 0.25 millimeters inside, and they are very 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 thin i will show you the difference i will get closer to the camera like that and like that so you can see the difference mm -hmm. approaching the camera so this is 24 26 and then 30 okay 
This is 24, 26 is less thick and, and 30 it is very, very thin and I use it to prototype my wiring, my PCB boards, I use these as a prototype wires, but generally I will go with 24 AWG. So why I'm talking about pre-thinned, let's get a look to this one, that if you want to strip, you can't strip PVC with your fingers and fingernails because it is too hard, you need to use some cutter like that and then strip it. But the wires, the 24, um, covered with um, silicone plastic, you can simply strip them like that. And you can see the difference in colors. This one is a pure copper wire, so it is a, co a copper color. This one, it is still copper, but it, all the single strands are covered by thin, they are pre-thinned, so it can facilitate the soldering process. Okay, so two wires, two different wires, and I'm going like that. Obviously, I have to uh, make the connection between an LED and the wire. This is too big to make the connection. I could do that, but I need to remove half of the strands and then cut them off and then get it. But the wire, uh, even if I will um, cut all the, the strands in half, it will be too exaggerate and not enough uh, flexible. But I need to connect a wire to a leg like that, okay, to a leg here. I have the wires and here I have the leg. How to connect them? Obviously I can do this. I can roll the wire around the leg like that, hoping that it will stay like that until I've completed the process of assembling the entire a street lamp, but it's not a suited, it will be easily removed. That's why uh, it is better to solder uh, wires, the wire and the LED. The wiring it's simple, but also the, the soldering process is very simple. Let me try to explain getting those two wires. If uh, uh, with those two wires, I can do this simply. Then getting there and I can have that connected. But this needs to be, it's not practical because even if I roll it like that and then move aside and then use some uh, white tape to put around those wires. If I pull too hard, this will come off. It's not like that. Connection, wires connection are not uh, meant to be like that. So you need to solder everything together in order to achieve a good result, okay? Uh, let me show you the process with those big wires and I will try to get closer zooming in because this is a, an important process. If you understand how easy it is to solder those two wires together and then use some tape like I told you to get some isolation, to get it preventing it to get short-circuited, okay? Using some white tape, black tape, uh, red tape, or even some shrinking tube, okay? I will show you quickly how to do that. But how to solder something? You need a soldering iron, and then you, sorry for the camera, guys. Oops, sorry and you will need some thin wire. 
they are not completely tin wire this is a mix of tin and some other products this is a mix of tin and copper SN stands for uh, thin and CU stands for copper stagno rame stagno and copper okay and this is a mix between uh, tin and copper and uh, some fluxant that uh, facilitate so you will need some tin material that will be melted and then applied on both sides or one side and then the other and then both sides get together let me try to explain how to melt this this will be melted by some um, uh, soldering iron they came in different types this is the most common the most cheapest soldering wire it's simple a stick like that and you have a regulator there this is a, a little regulator that goes from 200 uh, celsius Celsius degrees because I bought these in Europe so it is a Celsius Celsius degrees up to 450 degrees uh, this is a standard this is a very cheap between 7 euros and 10 euros between 7 USD and 10 USD you find them on Amazon on eBay everywhere and you need to plug them directly into the power system but they come here then you will also have some middle of some middle wiring station that are made by this way you have an on on switch like that and you can regulate the temperature okay the temp of the uh, soldering uh, of the um, soldering iron like that and you can regulate that up to 480 degrees this is suited for uh, a less uh, higher temperature between 250 and 30 and 300 degrees so you can regulate it like that and then use it and you can even place the uh, iron in uh, the um, iron solder iron solder not ironing the soldering iron sorry not <laughs> i'm not ironing my 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 shirt this is a soldering station and with a soldering iron there okay and this is like that and middle station you have seen me using it multiple times in some of my work then there are and let me switch this off then there are professional soldering station like this one that is big with a main central unit there and two two uh, uh, tools there I use these only for very important uh, work for my very precise uh, micro precise PCB works when I use it as I need to get very precise in my work and if I need to desolder something because this comes with an air blowing, an hot air blowing tool that has a tip there and it will blow hot air onto something I have to desolder instead of applying the tip of the iron there on top of something you will use hot air and you will use also hot air to shrink the shrinking tubes the plastic shrinking tubes there i will so show you everything this is a very not cheap a very expensive station that you can control the uh, um, hot air blowing tool like that and then you can uh, regulate the power there uh, and then from this side you will control the ironing tool the the high mm, the soldering iron sorry again the soldering iron there with temps here got getting down and up and i will show that so you can use whatever you want i'm used to the soldering stations like those ones 
and this is if you want to start working you will start working with those ones here let me show you how to proceed i generally use a couple of more tools there that i use to extend my work and to facilitate my work like that i'm gonna start with this standard cheap uh, soldering iron here that obviously don't have um, a way of preventing it to burn whatever you want around so i need something to place it on during the process i will get it there and then i will switch it on and place it to uh, for let's say 350 degrees this gets up to temp to temp to the right temperature uh, slower than the soldering stations okay so i will need to get there let me start by showing you how to get those two wires big wires together and let me try to get closer okay so i will do something i don't do generally and i will get closer a little more closer to what i'm doing right now like that and i've zoomed in okay let me zoom a little more in like that okay in order to let you see what i'm doing I will take a neat shrinking tube, say a yellow one, okay? So you will see the difference. And the heat shrinking tube gets inside very easily, okay? Inside the wire, okay? Like that. Before uh, starting the soldering process, you will need to... Um, you will need to cut a piece of a shrinking tube like that okay and get it inside the two parts because otherwise after it's not uh, possible then in this case i will not use some uh, thin uh, before getting the two parts together but i will go this way I will get one part another and I will get them like that like that then I will take uh, I've used this one maybe I will use this one okay then hoping you are seeing it correctly yes I will get my soldering iron like that. I will get some thin like that. I will test on the tip of the soldering iron if I get, don't worry for the fumes, but they are like that. I will apply some of the thin on top of the tip of the soldering iron, then I will apply the tip of the soldering iron onto the wires and i will get the wires and the strands at a good temp then i will get on top of not the tip of the soldering iron but on top of the uh, wires themselves some of the tin that will melt together and like that and the wires will change and get of the color of the uh, of the tin like that okay i will need to use like that i'm doing this very quickly like that it is enough not to not okay and don't worry it doesn't burn anything like that then if you need to clean the tip 
I use this is like a cleaning way of cleaning it okay and right now the two wires are connected together and they don't get off okay they are soldered in and if I apply so if I pull like that they don't came apart I can even um, cut some of the extensive some of the two okay like that and it will get like that connected then I get one side here like that and then I will go this way and generally you have you need to go with the tip of the two uh, connected wires the opposite way from where it comes the it shrinking tube otherwise you can have this and you can get through but if you get through there like that you will go like that and then you will need to it shrink this so I will use not the tip but the lower part and then that is still hot and then I will go this way and the heater shrinking tube will reduce the diameter and stick to the plastic of the wire like that and this one is done okay like that I will switch it off like that and switch it off like that the same thing can be done the same thing can be done with the other soldering station like that like that let me bring here the other soldering station I will go up I will go up like that and then use the same technique getting a piece of this it shrinking tube place it there inside like that connecting the two parts together like that getting around like that having it here like that and then testing the tip you who testing hope you can see everything yes testing the tip if it is hot enough yes it is then with the same technique going there and the thicker are the two wires together the more time you will need to get the two wires the two copper wires hot enough to uh, will be able to melt the the, t the tin the tin wire that I'm using here and you can see that it will take some time but in this case I can go up with the temp but I don't intend to go up with the temp and this is done like that I can clean the tip once more okay and it is uh, soldered together okay then I will take the cutter there and I will remove some parts in this time you have the tip the other way and then the sh it shrinking tube let me use this time uh, this one 
and you can hear that it has started getting up and here you get the temp that is going up it has reached 302 degrees then i will apply this like that and you will see that it is more clean and that the heat shrinking tube is getting there like that and it is retracting around like that maybe it's not it's enough yes maybe a little more there if it's not enough i will go up with the temp and i will continue doing this a little more like that like that then once i've finished i can simply put it there and it will goes down automatically down okay uh, and uh, it is better this way with some hot air than in this case but the results are similar okay the results are very similar if you don't have uh, at, or, at your disposal <laughs> this station here you can achieve the same re same result with the with the uh, soldering iron obviously okay silent uh, but also with a lighter it is uh, very dangerous to produce uh, some <laughs> some flame uh, around your work but even with a lighter with a cigarette lighter you can uh, uh, achieve the same reduce but a flame always when you burn something always you have some deposit of uh, uh, combustions around here okay what is like to work with leds like the, this one here okay like this little one it is the same but you don't get wires around <laughs> the legs but you go this way you place the leds there and i generally start with the longest leg as it is the positive one i will try to get as it needs to go inside there the led the shortest possible i will go the shortest possible no more than three millimeters and i will start with the longest leg like that okay and i will remember that this is the positive i will place this one there this time i will use this wire here the 24 awg 24 24 with a color that you can appreciate maybe green okay i will go with the green wire and i will do this cut a piece of wire like this one i will remove part of the uh, the isolating uh, silicon part and i can use it like this i don't need to place some thin around the wire because it is already pre-thinned okay but the leg of the LED has no um, thin on top of it so I will need to take the thin wire take this test if it is hot enough and then apply a minimum part let me go a little closer like this and apply a minimum quantity of tin on top of the leg like that i used a very small amount of tin uh, there not entirely covered okay a very very small amount of tin there now i can get this done like this 
hoping you can still see. Maybe I can try to get a little closer like that. Okay, then I will take my wire and then yes, I'm right-handed so maybe it is better no let's go like that sorry guys I needed to reposition the camera in the correct position so I'm approaching the to the wire to the to the LED and then apply some heat and then wait there until it cool down and then okay it is connected like that okay so one last time i will repeat the same thing for the the other side and then apply some uh, some um, heat shrinking tube like that i will apply some tin wire tin melted on top of the leg there like that then i will get another 24 awg this time i will go with blue time i will do the same thing for the second time but this time i will apply some of the tin also on the uh, second wire in order to have all the strands together or the 40 strands together and even if they are pre-thinned i sometimes use also this method here getting some of the tin there okay like that uh, you have seen then i will cut the excess then i will get in front of the camera this side here no I will get there like that okay I will get this one there and then I will go like that and it is done then I will get the smallest possible heat shrinking tube I can have. This is black and I only use one there. Like that. And then once again like that I will turn it round and it is done like that okay guys and it is absolutely done it has a switch it off and I can approach the camera once again like that and it is done and then I can bend like that and uh, positive and negative will not touch together even if i push hard because i've used some heat shrinking tube and uh, it has isolated the blue one that is the negative one from the other one okay and then I will use this connection, obviously with longer wires, to produce a street lamp with this. The same technique cannot be applied to the smallest one, but it is the same as the smallest one. Where are they? Here. It, it is simply... It is simply the tip 
that is different shaped and dimensioned but the legs are standard dimension and generally I cut where he is here the point here let me get on focus minimum length you need to go where it is marked there with these flat uh, flat there okay there but I've even got shorter when I cut those legs okay and obviously the long one is the positive and the short one is the negative enough it's really the end well guys it's obvious that I can't keep my word as this part two of the mini series is way over 30 minutes long I even think more the double of that length but it was absolutely necessary to let you have in just the two parts otherwise this will not be a mini series all the info all the theory you will need to really understand the building process that i will start in part three part one was focused on pure theory physics and electronics 101 this part two was focused on leds every aspect of leds from dimension to power to uh, intensity to color and then how to connect them to the wire and the last minutes obviously on the wires uh, what type of wires will i be using why i'm using those type of wires and how to solder an led to a wire with wires and LEDs you get 80% of the work, the rest is pure manufacturing time. And part 3 will be really interesting, I hope, at least for you. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing once again my not that awful but at least a minimum awful English and see you for part 3 next week but only if you really want bye guys